Hi everyone, so welcome to my channel. <laughs> my name is Elle and I make videos mainly about LGBTQ plus history and also other topics I find interesting. And today I wanted to talk about one of the most important events in LGBTQ plus history um, in the United States and that is the Stonewall Uprising, which is the reason we have pride events now. Um, just two little disclaimers, I might be looking to the side sometimes because I need notes to help me stay on track with what I'm saying. Um, and also I'm from and live in the United States, um, which is why most of these videos focus on US history. Um, but I'd love to spend, to expand to international events as well. Um, I just didn't want anyone to think I thought US queer history was the only queer history. Um, I think when most people think of the LGBTQ plus community, they think of pride. Um, the parades, the parties, rainbow flags, all that fun stuff. And it is one of my favorite events to go to each year. And a lot of even straight people in my life enjoy going to pride events, which is why I wanted to explain where these events started. So in the United States, prior to 1969, which is when this event took place, there were a lot of laws in place that were pretty homophobic and transphobic. Um, there are still some laws in place today that harm LGBTQ plus people, but back then it was much worse. It was illegal for um, a lot of queer people to dress the way that they wanted to. Like, people couldn't wear a certain amount of clothing items associated with the opposite gender. So for example, if a man was dressed too feminine and if a woman was dressed too masculine, they would be arrested. Um, to show affection to their partners in public, basically anything we did was criminalized. The Stonewall riots and up or uprising, whatever you want to call it, um, was one of the first times people really fought back against that. And it sparked a huge wave of activism towards LGBTQ plus rights. Um, it's considered a huge turning point for our rights in the U.S. So in, the, in New York City, um, in a neighborhood called Greenwich Village, there was, and still is, it's still open, a gay bar called the Stonewall Inn. Um, throughout history, there have been some cities and neighborhoods that were slightly safer for LGBTQ plus people to exist in and had bigger queer populations, and one of these was Greenwich Village. Um, it was allowed and it was routine for the police to raid gay bars, which at the time were one of the only spaces where queer people could meet each other and feel somewhat safe, and they would just go in and arrest people. Gay bars in general at the time were often run by the mafia because technically they weren't supposed to exist, and a lot of gay bars ended up getting shut down when it was found out that that was their purpose. Um, but there were some that hung on, and now obviously they are in most cities and are allowed to be there. Um, so one night on June 28th, 1969, though, um, the people in the Stonewall in that night had just had enough of all of that and decided to fight back because they weren't actually doing anything wrong. They were just there to like hang out with their friends you know um so the events at the stonewall Inn became increasingly tense during the night and sparked protests that lasted over the next few days until july 3rd so almost a week of protests about the treatment that people were receiving just for trying to exist as themselves uh these protests produced a lot of activist groups and attracted attention to activist groups that have formed shortly before this and people really started pushing for the decriminalization decriminalization of being gay. So on the anniversary of the protest, June 28th, 1970, the first Pride celebrations took place in a few major cities. And then over the years, that grew to most cities in the US having Pride celebrations in June. So that is why Pride takes place in June and why June is called Pride Month in the US. Um, it is a way to honor the people who fought for us to have what we have today and during that night at the Stonewall Inn. I think sometimes there's some confusion about why there is an LGBTQ plus pride and not a pride for straight people. And that's why. Um, 
it's to honor that historical event for the queer community and because being straight has never been illegal so there wasn't any sort of protests that had to happen in order for them to be allowed to exist as their authentic selves um so that's why but prior to the stonewall uprising there had been some smaller attempts at protesting this and i can talk about those in another video possibly but this was the first one to gain national attention and to spark such a big turnout so to go into some more detail about this particular night the stonewall inn had pretty good security um, because a lot of times undercover police would come into the bar and pretend to be just hanging out there, but then look for people showing affection to a person of the same gender, for example. It could be something as small as touching their leg and they would get arrested by these undercover cops. So there was a bouncer at the door that would look at people through a peephole before letting them in to see if they seemed like a threat or not and so a lot of people would intentionally try to look gayer um, so that they would be let in and make it clear that they were not police also if police were spotted they would turn all the lights on and everyone knew to stop dancing and being too close to another person because of its success and the amount of people who liked to go there it was considered the gay bar of new york city so on June 28th, 1969, four undercover police officers, two men and two women, went in to gather evidence while the public morals squad, that's what it was called, um, went, raided outside. Um, and then oftentimes people in the bar would get that tip off that a raid was about to happen. But on this night, no one caught it in time, so there wasn't any warning. Police came in shouting and the lights turned on and people obviously got scared and started trying to leave but police barred the doors normally when a raid would happen everyone would have to line up and show identification and then someone would have to verify your biological sex like a police officer would bring people into the bathroom and make sure they were dressed how they were supposed to be according to the anatomy that they had um which i can't even imagine how violating that would be um and then if you were dressed too much like the opposite gender, you'd be arrested. But on this particular night, people started refusing to be inspected in that way and refusing to even show ID and anything like that. So the police just decided to bring everyone to the police station and handle it there, I guess. Um, and people were becoming more and more agitated, rightfully so, because some of the police officers had tried to touch people inappropriately while checking them and um there were some issues with how they were going to transport everyone because the bar had like 200 people in it that night so um they did eventually let some people go but they didn't leave the people didn't leave and at this point the tension was building and a crowd was forming outside as well just like watching everything um this was a mix of people who were released from inside and people who had noticed the commotion the police got mad that some people were refusing to leave and started like shoving and kicking people out forcefully, which just made things even worse. As they were transporting people into the police vans, one police officer shoved someone who was dressed in drag and she hit him with her bag. So he hit her with a club. And that's when people started being, started booing loudly and chanting gay power and things like that. And people started throwing bottles and change and stuff at the vans because at this point the police had become too rough with both people inside the bar and the crowd outside. A lesbian named Stormy Delavery, I've also heard it pronounced Delavier, I don't know which one it is, um, kept escaping one of the police vans and the people were, the police were hitting her and eventually she said, why don't you guys do something to the crowd? And so people did and that's when like chaos kind of broke loose. Another notable person who was there was Marsha P. Johnson, who was a black transgender woman um, that participated in the protests, and she went on to become one of the most influential pe early activists in the movement. I think, I honestly might um, just do a whole video about her and her friend Sylvia Rivera. Um, so at this point, the police were still being really rough with people, and people were getting knocked in onto the ground, and some people were breaking out of the police vans and trying to tip them over. And at this point, the crowd had grown to around 500 people, which hugely outnumbered the amount of police. So the cops ended up barricading themselves inside the bar. So this wasn't an organized protest. This just kind of happened spontaneously because people were so fed up with things. 
People started throwing things at the building, like bricks and even a parking meter that they had taken out of the ground. Eventually, the police came back out and threatened to shoot people, and then fire trucks showed up because people had also been trying to light fires, like both protesters and police, um, for different reasons. And this whole thing lasted about 45 minutes. All of that chaos happened in about 45 minutes. Then the Tactical Police Force, or TPF, showed up to get the police that were inside the Stonewall Inn out. Um, and they were really angry because those officers, those officers had never lost control of a crowd like this before. And I think there was some level of not expecting a marginalized group that was seen as weaker at the time to be the ones to do that. So the TPF tried to push the crowd back, but the crowd started forming kick lines and chanting, which is kind of funny. But then police started hitting people with bats. This type of scene went on until about 4 a.m. when the crowd started to disperse a little and people were really angry and also really empowered because they managed to stand up for themselves. Um, and in all, only about 13 people were actually arrested that night. So a lot of people successfully avoided arrest. And unfortunately, several people, both protesters and cops, ended up with injuries um, and the Stonewall Inn itself was a complete mess. Part of it had caught on fire, and most things in it were broken, including most of the windows. The next day, the uprising was all over the news, so a lot of more people joined in on this movement. People went back to the Stonewall Inn and wrote things in graffiti like drag power and legalize gay bars. Uh, that night, a second night of protest, pretty much as intense as the first, happened, and thousands of people gathered in front of the bar, both queer people and allies, um, and the tension between protesters and police happened again until about 4 a.m. again. The protest continued over the next few days, like I said, and it garnered a lot of press coverage, both good and bad. Um, on one hand, it inspired a lot of people to join the movement and care about the issue, but on the other hand, some people used it as an excuse to be homophobic. So, but these events spurred the formation of a lot of important LGBTQ plus activist groups that were successful for decades after the events, such as the Gay Liberation Front, um, the Gay Activist Alliance, and STAR, which stood for Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, which was started by Marsha P. Johnson and another trans woman named Sylvia Rivera. In 2019, on the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots, the New York City Police Commissioner issued an apology to the LGBTQ plus community for how people were treated by the police that night. Um, and these protests left a huge legacy on the community and a lot of our history is categorized by pre and post Stonewall eras. Uh, at Pride, there are usually a lot of people with signs and shirts commemorating Stonewall because if it hadn't happened, we wouldn't be able to be out in the street celebrating our community and being open about who we are. Um, the Stonewall Inn is now considered a national monument and it's still open. I hope to visit there someday. I've seen it from the outside, but I've never gone inside it to attend an event or anything. And I'd love to do that. Um, when I think about Stonewall, I think about how previous generations and like the elders of the community are responsible for my generation being able to have so much of what we have now. Um, and yeah, things aren't perfect now either, but I'm so thankful that I can hold another girl's hand without getting arrested. And I admire people so much who had to live through that era and worked so hard to make sure younger generations wouldn't have to have those same hardships and unfair treatment. So um, there's so much more I could say, but I'll stop here for now. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.